welcome to our competition. Sing our national anthem is Elise O'Connell, Miss South Central 2018. Contestant number two, Emma Garrison. My social impact is 
Paint your purpose and I'll bring child with you together. A junior at Gateway Technical College with a major in nursing, my social impact is sore. Scars of amazing radiance, encouraging those to embrace their scars. I am candidate number four, Alex Matson. I'm a graduate from the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. I have a master's degree from Western Illinois University, and I'm pursuing a second master's degree, degree in clinical psychology at Cardinal Strait University. Thank you. Hello and welcome everybody. I'm team contestant number three, Trinity Horseman. I am currently attending Holman Middle School as an eighth grader this year, and my platform is called Girls Overtaking Lunch Funds. Representative. 
us beautifully at Miss Wisconsin competition this June, winning the Fort White Scholarship, the Community Service Award, and an on-stage interview <laughs> preliminary award. Give her a round of applause. Representative for the organization, not only just this year, but throughout all of your years. And I, I can say that from the bottom of my heart that you truly do live your social impact initiative and you inspire so many girls to do the same. Uh, and now we are ready to start the first phase of competition on stage interview, which counts for 50%, 15% of the candidates' total score. All right, so are we ready to begin? And to begin the on-stage interview, please welcome candidate number one, Brooke Dosher. Brooke, your question will be asked by judge number one, Brianna Johnson. Hi, Brooke. Your social impact initiative, Shattered Innocence, affects children from all backgrounds. How would you reach children and families in underserved populations? You have to be able to really share your story. With me being able to share the, with them my story of what happened to me, I can be able to give them the resources that they need to be able to help them get out of those situations before it's too late because we really need those kids in our communities to be the next president, the next scientist, the next whatever they want to be. Your question will be asked by Judge Number Two, Shane Conley. Hi. Uh, you cited uh, mental illness as the social issue that will have the greatest impact on your generation. Uh, what concrete steps can your generation take to reduce mental health stigma? I think a big part of it is actually using social media to our advantage to talk about it. And that way, the more that it's talked about, it's not quite seen as something that has a negative connotation and that will encourage people to go and receive the help that they need in the future. That was a change in the narrative that childhood cancer affects the wide range of children ages 0 to 18 rather than just preschool and elementary age children. Being diagnosed with thyroid cancer at 17 years old, I really, my eyes are opened up to have cancer isn't just for elementary school, so I think sharing my personal story about how I was diagnosed and now my brother was just diagnosed at age 17 and just bringing that message that it's not just affecting one group but everybody. white people problem, that's someone else's problem and it's not a problem they feel like that they have. 
And then when conducting my research, I think it comes making sure I know exactly what I'm talking about when I go into those situations. If I can tell them, here's what I've done, here's what I know about it, tell me your story. I think I would conduct it in a way that allows them to give me more of the data that is just sharing their story instead of me putting them in a box and saying, whatever, one, two, three, four, just allowing them that space that often is not received. healthcare benefits for military personnel and their families adequately covers women health needs and why? I do feel that because we have some of the best benefits that our government is able to offer um, employees. We are actually one of the main reasons of retention in the military is because we have such great health insurance, particularly for women. The cost to have a child being in the military with our insurance is so low that, I mean, that's the one stay in. So yes, I think it's a great opportunity and a great reason why people decided to join the military in the first place. Thank you. You stated uh, during your interview that uh, water-related accidents are the leading cause of death for um, people ages 0 through 4. Uh, what do you think is the most effective way to uh, reach that demographic with your message? I think educating the parents is the biggest portion of that issue because they see a lifeguard or an arm floating on the kid and they think the kid is protected. But we need to understand that the parents are the main line of defense here. They should always be within arm's reach of their child if their child is in any amount of water. Hi, 
Hi, Jennifer. So you are the Associate Manager of Donor Relations for American Diabetes Association. What is one of the biggest hurdles that you face in securing monetary donations for the cause? I think one of the biggest uh, hurdles to overcome is getting the courage to ask. What I've found is that once you ask, people are more than willing to give and donate. But you have to find that confidence and that passion to ask people for money, which can be awkward at first, but once you do that, the reward itself is worth it. Your uh, social impact focus on uh, addressing veteran uh, unemployment. Um, how do we um, raise veteran issues with employers and get them educated about those? So in Sparta, we hold a job fair that the Monroe County uh, Veteran Service Office does. So one of the main ways to kind of get people aware of the fact that veterans come home and they struggle to find employment is to go ahead and hold those job fairs to increase awareness in the community. Part of it is starting to have that conversation. So what we can do is start to spread those job fairs throughout the state of Wisconsin and then eventually globally. movement relate to men and women in the military? It relates in uh, the same aspect of giving them that opportunity to speak out and say that this happened without judgment. It is something that should be investigated no matter what uh, gender you are, no matter if you are military or not, but it does relate to them in that same aspect and it shouldn't be any different just because they are in the military.
activewear. I was sweating in the audience watching them. It was very intense, but it shows how athletic they are. Well, while we're waiting for our candidates to get ready for their next area of competition, let's acknowledge the group of distinguished individuals who select our new title holders. All right, our first judge is Rihanna Johnson. Rihanna Johnson is a Wisconsin native and a graduate from the University of Wisconsin La Crosse, where she majored in organizational and professional communication studies and women and gender studies. Rihanna has, some, has fond memories of competing in the Miss America organization and serving as Miss Wisconsin 2011 and 2014. She performed a lyrical dance on point for her talent and promoted her platform Tyler's Legacy, the impact of substance use on the family. Honoring the life of her brother who struggled with a drug addiction and died by suicide in 2005. Rihanna is still an advocate for addiction and suicide prevention, speaking to various audiences and partnering with like-minded organizations and initiatives. She is currently the Business Development Director for a Madison Area Mental Health and Addiction Agency. In her free time, Rihanna enjoys spending time with her family, boyfriend, and cuddling with her puppies, Gunnar and Gracie. Please welcome Rihanna Johnson. Our next judge is Shane Conley. Shane is originally from the Green Bay area and a magna cum laude graduate from the University of Notre Dame. He attended Loyola University Chicago School of Law before transitioning to a Master's of Sciences in Rehabilitation Counseling from the University of Wisconsin Stout. He now works as a UW Stout, at work at UW Stout as a Disability Services Advisor, helping to coordinate classroom accommodations for students with disabilities that provide them with equal access to the university environment. He currently resides in Menominee, Wisconsin, and is an avid fan of Pokemon, yoga, and trying out new vegan recipes. Shane is excited to judge his first Miss America local competition after being a spectator and supporter for the last few years. Please welcome Shane Conley. Our third judge is Leah Nicholas. Leah currently resides in Chicago, flying the friendly skies of an O'Hare-based flight attendant with SkyWest Airlines, covering over 300,000 miles per year. She has a background in jazz, lyrical, tap, tumbling, and baton twirling. Leah got her start with the Miss America organization as a contestant in Miss Oshkosh pageant in 1999. She went on to become the choreographer and co-director and producer of the local pageant for 11 years. She then became actively involved with the Miss Wisconsin pageant as a featured dancer from 2004 to 2008. She ran the state's first year of a princess program in 2010. She then joined the production team as an assistant director and choreographer in 2012 and went on to become the co-director slash producer from 2014 to 2016. Leah, Leah is an advocate for both Crohn's and Colitis Foundation and the American Heart Association, spreading awareness of the diseases as Crohn's patients and heart attack survivors herself. Please welcome Leah Nicholas. Next up, we have Antasia Gilliam. She was born in Beloit, Wisconsin and moved to Rockford, Illinois at the age of 10. She graduated from Guilford High School in 2009 and then moved back to Beloit in 2014 with her daughter, Sayana, who is now five years old and super adorable. <laughs> she is currently a student at Blackhawk Technical College and will graduate in 2021 with her associate's degree in education. Antasia is a member of the New Zion Baptist Church. <laughs> We're very grateful. Uh, where she operates the church nursery and also is a co-founder of Blessings for Babies, which provides educational services and items for families in need. She enjoys working with children and giving back to the community. In her free time, she enjoys cooking, riding horses, and writing poetry. <laughs> Please welcome Hannah and Tasia. Our fifth judge is Crystal Sims. Crystal Sims is a partner of Henderson Bakes Law, a law firm located in downtown Chicago, Illinois. She, was, she is a Wisconsin native where she earned her dual Bachelor of Arts in Criminal Justice and Political Science with a concentration in law from the University of Wisconsin Parkside. After her undergraduate studies, she moved to San Antonio, Texas, where she worked for Spurs, Spurs Sports and Entertainment prior to moving to Chicago, Illinois for law school. Crystal received her Juris Doctor from the John Marshall Law School and now the University of Illinois, Chicago John Marshall Law School. Crystal concentrates her practice on sports and entertainment, employment, and personal in injury. She is also a former pageant contestant. During her time competing, she made the top 15 at both Miss Wisconsin USA and Miss Illinois USA. Please welcome Crystal Sims. Also assisting 
assisting with our judging is our judge's chair, Jason Pico, um, and our auditors, who jumped in like an hour or two ago, and I'm really sorry that I don't know your names. And I have to say something about one of these gentlemen. I already told him I was going to say this. So this, this man right here, his name is Dustin, and we actually went to the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater together. I had no clue he was going to be an auditor today, but he also helped me to get my career in education. I'm not good at standardized tests, and he tutored me a lot. So I thank him for helping me to get to my career.
tried to touch I told the truth I didn't come to fool you And even though
around here, and he happens to also be my father. This is Bob Bowen. We'd like to thank him for putting the sound and the music together for us last minute. Can we give him a nice round of applause? Yeah. I mean, we're going to have this at a church that we were going to have to have sound and music. We probably weren't going to have that. Well, you know, my dad is a professional magician. So he pretty much travels with the stage everywhere he goes. And I knew he was going to be home this weekend. My dad travels all over the country, so I was really lucky that he was going to be home this weekend. So we are very, very gracious to have him to do the sound and the music for all of the girls. All right, please welcome candidate number seven, Katie Zarni. Kay will be performing a French monologue entitled Je Sois. Je me sens to the end, don't know no why. Hide away, they say. Cause we don't want your broken parts. Il mont à prix à voir un nez de moi. Run away, they say. Jamais personne ne m'aimerait. Mais je ne les lacerai. Holla Dentrier. Heels on a telemont a dear. Une mot en concure. When the sharpest words want to cut me down, I'm going to send a flood. Going to drown them out. Je suis for mes blessés. Et no, je ne veux rien changer. Je suis moi. Je suis vrai comme le bâtiment de mon coeur. I'm not scared to be seen, I make no apologies. This is me. This is brave. This is proof. I'm who I'm meant to be. Look out, cause here I come. And I'm marching on to the beat. I drum. Je ne m'excuserai pas. D'être moi. We'd also like to thank some of our sponsors that we have had throughout our competition. Ironworks Hotel was able to put up a lot of candidates. They were able to put up a few judges, and I even stayed there. It is a beautiful hotel. I can tell you that they give you excellent service. You can have any venue there. They have a beautiful restaurant, and they really treated us really well. And I think it's a great place to stay if you're in the Boy area. It was beautiful. And I know that they have restaurants that include with the hotel. Has anyone stayed at Ironworks? Anyone here staying at Ironworks? It's great, isn't it? Beautiful. All right, if we're ready for our next contestant. All right, please welcome candidate number eight, Maria Ehrlich.
Beauty, which just happened in December, December 19th was when Finals Night happened. And I think that's what I love about Miss America 2.0, as you were to say, that we have now transitioned into allowing girls to exemplify whatever their fine arts talent might be. It might be speed painting, it might be giving a monologue, it might even be a science experiment as Miss Virginia Camille Schreier won Miss America. So I think this is a testament that any girl can be a part of Miss America organization and we truly do exemplify them so they can be successful. I think we're ready. And please welcome candidate number nine, Ryan Swanson.
Madden. Sarah will be singing on my own.
Please welcome candidate number 13, Emily Phillips. Emily will be dancing to You Will Be Found. Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall and no one would hear? Well, let that lonely feeling wash away. Maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay. When you don't feel strong enough to stand If you can reach, reach out your hand And oh, someone will come running And I know they'll take you home Even when the dark comes crashing through
so grateful for Exit Realty, especially Kelly Clubs, as she is sponsoring our crowns for our new title holders. Let's give them a very big round of applause. <laughs> now we will be moving on to the next phase for our team competition, Talent. Talent counts for 35% of the total score. Please welcome contestant number one, the Liberty Moogar Hour. Liberty, look at the army. Here in Lomotan's road is something in the water.
more women as much as we can during this competition. So because of that, we've decided to partner with the Alliance for Period Supplies. It's an alliance that's sponsored by our local charity called Caritas. And what they do is they try and collect donations and supplies for women who are homeless and unfortunately don't have access to the necessities that are required to take care of their menstrual cycle every single month. So I know it's a bit of a touchy subject, but it's absolutely something that's a need. So if you would like to donate, there's a box out in the lobby for you, okay? Thank you. The second half of the show will feature some very special guests along with our final phase of competition, evening wear and social impact statement. And of course, the crowning of our 2020 title holders. But during intermission, you'll have the opportunity to visit our silent auction area and bid on some of our wonderful items and participate in our 50-50 raffle. At the end of intermission, local title holders, please see me at the stairwell. And we'll see you all in 15 minutes. Thank you. Trinity, what would you do to combat bullying in your school? 
Personally, I would tell a teacher who I trust about someone being bullied in my school because I know that is a big issue in my community today. Thank you. Thank you. That was contestant number three, Trinity Morrison. Now on to our Miss Candidates. Please welcome candidate number one, Brooke Dosher.
600,000 people die from cancer each year. My dad is a part of that statistic. Everyone here knows someone who's been impacted by cancer. As your next title holder, I intend to focus on advocacy for patients, education for cancer prevention, and fundraising for a cure. I believe that we can make this cancer's last decade. Together, we can win. That was Kennedy, number five, Lori and Kennedy. Please welcome Kennedy, number six, Hannah Ostertag. still 
125,000 children in foster care waiting to be adopted. Every member of the community can play a crucial role in helping these kids. If you can't adopt, foster. If you can't foster, donate. I am committed to helping our community connect with these kids so that we can help them find their forever family.
this candidate number 13, Emily Phillips. Please welcome candidate number 14, Grace Stanky.
All right. Well, let's give our ladies a round of applause for all of the hard work that they have done tonight. All of the hard work that they've done tonight. So we are pleased to welcome in our local representatives. If you ladies would love to come out, give them a round of applause. initiative is It's Your Identity, Protect It, focusing on securing your identity online. I am a graduate of Waukesha County Technical College with my associate's degree in IT Network Security. Hello everyone, my name is Annalisa Bass and I am Miss Milwaukee Area's Outstanding Team. My platform is Learning Like Me, Breaking Down the Walls of Learning Challenges, and I am a high school student, a high school senior at the Prairie School. Hello everyone, welcome to Beloit. I am Miss Beloit 2019, Abby Miller. My social impact initiative is the Happy Jar Project, advocating for accessible mental health resources. And I am currently a junior at the UW, uh, at the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater, studying political science with a legal studies emphasis. Hello everyone, I'm Miss Beloit's outstanding teen, Allison Hoffman. My platform is Let It Be Wild, Environment and Wildlife Protection, and I am currently a senior at Beloit Turner High School. All of our ladies, a nice round of applause. Now, let me see up here, because we hear something special. Susan's going to explain. We do have a very special task for these ladies. Now, a big moment that we had today, deciding that we were going to give our third title of Miss Turtle Creek, um, was a lot of the financing of it. So we've decided to have a crown minute to try and help offset some of these finances to give a third woman an opportunity at Miss Wisconsin, and you ladies are going to help. Now let's remember, this crown is not just a session crown, it's also a scholarship. So let's remember that we are now providing more scholarship dollars to young women to further their careers and to become successful. What are they going to do? So we are going to do a really hard one minute. Please get out some of your dollars or change in your pocket. Get those you get I, know, I know you had to pay for your ticket. We know that you got something. You got, Minimum, something. You got change in your pocket. You have something. And we know that. Um, so we are going to do a hard one minute. And Melissa, take it away. All right, are, are we, should we count it down? All right, three, two, one. All right, ladies, go get that money. <laughs> Somebody, okay? 
No, just right from their seat, just fine. Pick anybody you want. Now listen, what I need you to do is, I need you to show everybody that the deck is a regular deck. So just spread it apart for all different cards. It's a large deck so that everybody can see what is there. Okay? Now, Pam, what's your name? Maxine. Maxine. Maxine, all I need you to do is take one finger and touch a card. Now keep your finger on it, and Alyssa, bring that card to the top of the deck. All right. And then slide that top card off to her. There you go. Okay, good. Now, Maxine, I want you to look at the card, memorize the card, now shuffle the card. <laughs> Actually, what I need you to do, I'm going to turn around so I don't see what it is. I want you to hold it up. In fact, could you hold it up for her? I'm going to have you guys hold it up and show it to the audience so that everybody sees what card it is. Does everybody see Maxine's card? Good. All right. Because, you see, what I'm going to do, Maxine, in just a moment, I'm going to draw a picture of your card on this pad of paper. So what I need you to do is I need you to concentrate on what that card is, okay? And if all of you saw it as well, I want you to try to remember what that card and pass that thought up to me. Are you ready, Maxine? All right, good. Here we go. My marker out. Okay, see if we can do this. Okay, Maxine? Start concentrating on the card that you picked. Because I'm going to read your mind. Lines of life, one or the other. Okay? I need all of you to concentrate on this, okay? I'm gonna try this again. I'm positive I can get it this time. Ladies and gentlemen, I have drawn the Ace of Clubs. Is that your card? I didn't say it was, I just said I drew the Ace of Clubs. Really, it's not? It isn't? No. I can explain this. I hope. See, this is just the front card of the entire deck of cards. So now I'm going to finish drawing in the deck, okay? So there we go. There we go. Okay, and as you can see, somewhere, your card is there. You're on my list, are you? Alright. I told you I would find your card. What I need you to do is, I need everybody to concentrate on Maxine's car. Keep one eye on the deck, one eye on Maxine, and one eye on me. Let's see if we can do this.
She's our queen for sure. And I'm gonna just harp on her for like a second because I love her. I think what's so special about Shanita Ray as our director is that the day after we both won a year ago, uh, she FaceTimed each of us for like over an hour because that's how we talk. And she said, she made us line out. She's like, what are your goals for this year? She's like, for your appearances, for your social impact initiatives, for Miss Wisconsin, what are your goals? And we sat there and we outlined them all out. And she was like, great, then for the next six months, we're gonna be laser focused on what we can do to make you achieve those goals. And friends, I think it worked. Like a <laughs> Achieve our goals, I would like to introduce Miss Shanita Ray. Alright, so I said I wasn't going to cry, and then here she goes starting to talk, so that didn't help much. Um, I, first of all, would like to thank all of you for being here, um, trudging through um, the ice um, to get here. I sometimes think that I'm crazy um, because um, this is quite a, a hard thing to take on. Um, and so with that said, I must make sure that I um, acknowledge the people who have been in the trenches with me. Um, I'd like to give a special thank you to my co-director, Sam Happy. Um, Jason Pika. Jackie Jackson. Jessica Johnson. Putting up with half pieced together ideas and making this 
um, great production. I'd also like to thank the board of Wisconsin, uh, Miss Wisconsin um, for entrusting me with, um, <laughs> with um, these young ladies. Um, and I know I'm missing people. I also would love to thank the judges. Many of you, I push, pulled, and draft, um, and begged as well. Um, so thank you. Um, and I know I'm missing someone, but I can't think of anything. Oh, yes, and our auditors. Oh, my gosh. Um, our auditors as well um, for the last minute um, come through. Um, and I'd also like to thank Jeff of Black Art Video. He's been um, videotaping for us. And if you would like to order a video on the pink table out there, it has now transformed into um, forms that you can order um, a video. Um, and I'd like to thank God this even happened. Um, <laughs> so thank you. Um, and I will not prolong this because, um, oh wait, there's one other person. Alyssa Baum. <laughs>
Um, some of you are here, and I cannot thank you enough for making that week go so smoothly. Um, I made so many lifelong best friends and so many memories um, from our lunchtime sitting sessions um, to um, us joking until the middle of the night. I can't thank you guys, and I can't wait to see what we all accomplish as we get older. Um, to my successor, congratulations and welcome to the family. I wish you nothing but the best of luck in your years of service. Um, it's a crazy ride, but you have the most amazing director and the best board of people standing behind you. So take lots of, lots of pictures and soak in every moment because it truly does fly by. Oh goodness, no hard part. At the start of my year, I thought this was going to be forever away, um, but here it is. For the last time, I am your Miss South Central's Outstanding Team, 2019, Alyssa Harmon. <laughs> I had no idea. I have a full conversation with my mom 
where we learned like halfway through that like Miss Door County went to Miss Wisconsin and like went to Miss America and we were like, but do we have to? Like that, I just don't, I don't think I want to. I think I just want to be like Miss Door County and I didn't get it. Um, and the thing I originally wanted it for was because I love my parents so dearly, um, but I'm a first generation low income student and my parents always said, you can do whatever you want to do, you can be whatever you want to be and you can do great things, but you need an education. And that meant that I needed scholarships because I did not know how to pay for it otherwise. Um, and so I started competing for Mr. County. Obviously, I got hooked. Here we are, eight years later. And I think a really important point for the parents, especially here, because I know your daughters probably can't hear me. Um, I competed for eight years for probably about 25 local competitions. It took me six years before I ever won my first local. It took me 17 attempts to become a local title holder. And I've been so blessed to be at three times now, but throughout that time, and I never made top 10 at Miss Wisconsin, never became Miss Wisconsin, but through all that, I earned $22,000 in cash scholarships for my education, and I got to graduate my bachelor's degree debt free. <laughs> And speaking of impact, which has become like my new favorite word this year, um, it was about my social impact initiative. It was about the fact that I was able to found a 501c3 nonprofit organization centered around, uh, well, both my sweet parents, my father, who is a 100% disabled Marine Corps veteran, um, and my sweet mother, who has just done everything. Also, this is Barbara Ann in the back. Can we just please get her? She needs her all round of always taught me, again through 17 local titles, through three times of this, through watching one of my dearest sisters and my two-time sister queen <laughs> take over the title of Miss Wisconsin, um, was perseverance. And I think that I had, I used to have a very false sense of what perseverance meant. I thought it used to mean that if you work super hard and you never give up, at some point like you'll achieve your dream, you'll achieve your goal that you're kind of looking for, which for most of us is Miss Wisconsin and Miss America. And sometimes the fact is, is that you don't achieve that particular goal. But that was never the point of perseverance and tenacity. The point is that you are strengthening that muscle. The point is that perseverance, confidence, um, tenacity, anything that you want, whether it's dance or music, you need to train it. It is a muscle that needs to be trained. And now I can go through pretty much anything. I can handle rejection real well. <laughs> uh, through every time I didn't get into a, a grad school, get a job that I thought I was perfect for, it was fine. I was always able to pick myself up really fast and get back to the next thing. And that was always the point. And that is a skill that I don't think I would have ever acquired if I didn't go through this crazy, crazy eight-year journey of this program. And that was always the point. The point was to get these skills, to get these friendships, to get these scholarships. And by golly, if I didn't achieve those two things, I don't know what else I did. But the third thing that I really gained throughout all of this, and it sounds cheesy, and if you're new here, I know that you don't get it and you're gonna think I'm like lying to you, but it's sisterhood. These are women that have picked me up when I have been at my lowest lows, have celebrated with me at my highest highs, have been with me through everything. <laughs> this one can attest to that, uh, which is so fun. There's a woman who I competed with years ago who is now on my board of directors and the vice president of my organization. I have a business partner out of this. I have people that I know I will have for the rest of my life, including Ms. Janina Ray. And I think that's the most beautiful thing. So out of everything that I hope anyone takes out of this program, I hope it's scholarships, I hope it's perseverance, and I hope it's the people that will be with you for the end of time. So now, I get to close out a full eight years, and the last time I ever get to be a local title holder before this one ropes me into a committee, <laughs> which she already has, so that's fine. <laughs> um, but I guess what I'm supposed to say at this point is that for the last time, it has been an extreme honor to be your Miss South Central 2019, Susan Foch.
competition. Candidate number 14, Grace Sankey. <laughs> Is Sarah Dadu? Yeah.